Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back. I'm Jeannie and if you ever struggle with longevity of your water slide decals, if they peel off on you, in today's video I'm going to show you how you encapsulate your water slide decals in clear dip powder using only dip liquids and hopefully that will be what helps keep your water slide decals to stay put and not peel off on you. I went ahead and pre-dipped my middle finger, which is what my water slide decal is going to go on. So the color I used for this is white diamonds. To be honest, I used white diamonds because I was looking for my milky white and I couldn't find it. And I came across this in my drawer and it was just so beautiful that I thought, of course, if I can make it sparkly, why wouldn't I? So this is a beautiful white micro flake shimmer and it looks amazing under the decal so i did that i capped it in clear activated filed and buffed and then these are the decals i'm going to use so this is the keep it moody sheet from decals by melissa I um, haven't decided at this point which decal I'm going to use, but I thought they would go really well with the dip powder that I'm going to use on the rest of my nails, but I want them on my nails first before I decide which decal I want to use. Now for the rest of my nails, I'm going to be using Weird Friendship Anomaly from CN Designer Dips as well and wait till you see this beautiful flaky dip. So this is a thermal and it's a glow. Uh, if you stay till the end, I will show pictures of the different states of Weird Friendship Anomaly, but it is just so beautiful. It sold out at the first release. I think there was a limited re-release of this, so I'm not sure at the time this video will actually upload that there will be more available, but I believe it is a mainline color, so I would just keep an eye out for when it restocks if it is out of stock by the time I upload this video. Because the jars are so full, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it into my Chaos Gemerald from Chaos Concepts, and I'm gonna give it a good stir. And that's because glow pigments are heavier and they tend to settle. So for any of my glow powders, I always make sure I give them a good stir first, just to make sure I get a good glow. But just have to show you this, look at how beautiful this is, and it's even prettier dipped. And also I'll be using my CN Designer Dips Dip Liquids for this Manny, so we're not going to do any gel with this Manny. Just before I started my Manny, I realized that a little bit of my peel base on my index finger had peeled off and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get a clean pop off when I was ready to pop off the Manny because some of the parts of peel base were missing. So I'm going to go ahead and apply another layer of peel base to my index finger and let that fully dry. And this is my Hallow Taco peel base, which I've been using a lot of lately. So I'm going to let that dry. But in the meantime, I will start on my other fingers while that's drying. I removed the excess liquid from my dip base brush because I don't want to flood my cuticles and I apply a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail. Now when I'm applying dip base, I start at about the middle of my nail, I brush downwards towards my free edge and then I will push up towards my cuticle line and that ensures I don't have too much liquid at my cuticle line to avoid any flooding. And then I lay my finger flat into the powder and then I'm going to clean up my cuticle area using my precision tool and you can already see the thermal at work so when warm it's a white and then when cold it's that darker gray that you see at my free edge now the flakies in weird friendship anomaly are a little bit stiffer they're not difficult to work with but they are a bit stiffer so i make sure that i'm pressing down as well before the dip base dries to make them lay a little bit flatter I think laying into the powder also helps with the flakies laying a bit flatter than if you were to dip into the jar or pour over. You'd probably have more flakies sticking up. So if you're working with a dip powder that has a little bit of stiffer flakies, you might want to keep that in mind that it may be easier to just lay your finger into the powder rather than dipping in or pouring over. It may not look like much right now, but wait till you see these flakies top coated. They are just stunning and they pop against the white. They pop against the dark gray black. They are just amazing.
I'm just double checking that my peel base is fully dry before I start dipping on top of it. If I don't wait till it's fully dry, it could affect its ability to pop off cleanly. And I wanna make sure that I don't do any damage when I'm doing removal. So I just wanna make sure that it's fully dry before I do this. I went ahead and did the second dip off camera because I didn't want to be too repetitive because it's just one color. So now I'm going to go ahead and cap everything in clear. Now because of the flakies in this dip powder, you do want to make sure you're encapsulating it if you're going to file and buff or else you will file through the flakies and lose some of the beautiful colors. So same thing, when I cap and clear, I'm also making sure I'm pressing down to ensure that if there are any flakies still sticking up that I missed, that I'm pressing them down. And I'll show you also when I get to my activator phase, I kind of treat it like I do chunky glitters. And you don't have to encapsulate with clear dip powder. If gel is your preference, you could do gel base and gel top coat, or you can use a clear builder gel, whatever you choose. I would just say though, if you're working with gels, I would not use clear dip powder with it. I would just encapsulate with the gels only because a lot of times clear dip powder does not play nicely with gels and it could look grainy and a little foggy. After my dip base is fully dry, I'm going to make sure to give my nails a good scrub with a stiff scrub brush and that removes any of the excess powder and that helps with any graininess or cloudiness to ensure that that doesn't happen. And then I'm going to go in with my activator and I'm going to apply a generous amount just to ensure that my nails are fully hardened before I go in and file and buff. Similar to my chunky glitter method, I'm gonna wait till the activator just begins to dry. It's no longer sticky, but it's not completely dry. And then I'm gonna start pressing down. And what this does is as your activator is drying, you're pressing down the glitters or flakies, whatever it is. So it's drying flat because you're pressing down as it is drying. And this is a total game changer when you're working with something that you want to flex a little bit more so it's not sticking up in your mani. The trickiest part to this method is just finding the right time to start pressing down because if you press down too soon, it'll just stick and you could pull up any of the glitters or flakies. But if you wait too long and your activator is already fully dry, it's not going to work. So you just kind of have to play with it to find the right timing. I find that when it looks wet, you don't want to press down, but when it starts to get matte, that's kind of the perfect time where I start pressing down. And I'm using my finger, but sometimes I actually use a baggie just to make it a little less messy. I filed and buffed off camera. So here's how it's looking. You can see that the flakies are all intact and you can start to see their beautiful colors. But now let's get into these water slide decals. So first I have to pick which one I want to use. And I'm kind of using like the colors of the flakies to kind of figure out which decal I want to use. And sometimes it takes seeing the color on my actual nail before I decide which I like best. I'm cutting out the decal I chose, so I'm just going to cut around it and then I'm going to cut a little bit closer to the design. It doesn't have to be exact, but it is on a transparent background and the less I have, the easier it is to apply your decal. I'm going to apply a layer of the Maniology Sticky Base Coat to my middle finger because I want something tacky for my decal to adhere to because it may not stick to the smooth dip powder. So I'm placing my decal in a little bit of water in my little resin dish and then I will apply the Sticky Base Coat. 
the sticky base coat you want to it's finding that sweet spot as well so you don't want it fully dry but you don't want it completely wet so I usually wait maybe like 30 seconds at most before I'm ready to apply my decal which is why I went ahead and put my decal in water so it's the same thing of I kind of watch it and wait till it starts looking a little matte and once I'm think I'm at that point, I'm going to go ahead and fish my decal out of the water and place it on the paper towel so that I can blot off any of the excess water because you don't want any of that excess water because it may not stick well. It could cause air bubbles or wrinkles in your decal. So you want to remove that excess. I'm going to pick it up with my jelly stamper. This one's for maniology as well. And then I'm going to slowly slide away the backing of the decal leaving only the decal so here's what it looks like and then i'm going to figure out where i want it placed on the nail and then once i've got my placement right i'm going to press down and the decal will stick to my nail i do still have like the tiniest bit of decal that's hanging off my nail so i'm going to take my cleanup brush and a little bit of acetone and i'm going to start cleaning that up so because the decals are so delicate acetone actually melts them so I'm going to kind of brush it against the excess parts and it's going to melt off the excess decal. This next step is completely optional because I am going to encapsulate my water slide decal with clear dip powder but I did decide to go in with a layer of smudge free top coat. This is an air dry from Maniology just to make sure my decal was extra protected but I didn't have to do this. I could also just go in with my dip base and as long as I don't drag the dip base brush against my decal, if I kind of float my dip base, it would have been perfectly fine. But now that my smudge free top coat is completely dry, now I'm going to do my encapsulation. So I'm going to apply a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail and then I'm going to dip in my clear dip powder and this really is a good protective layer for your decal so if you struggle with peeling because your hands are in water all day or if you're rough on your nails whatever it may be this may really help to make to kind of sandwich it in and extra protect it because the dip powder is kind of harder I'm curious if you do encapsulate your water slide decals in clear dip powder, what's your experience with that? Do you find it provides better longevity for you? Does it work better for you? Let me know down below in the comments. I scrubbed off my excess clear, so now I'm going to go in with another layer of activator. Now, again, totally optional, but I'm a little ner neurotic, so I like to do just some very light buffing, which is why I'm going to activate and I'm not going to go in with top coat just yet. So I'm going to apply a generous amount of activator. I'm going to wait two minutes and then I'm just going to do a very light buff. I don't want to buff through the clear. I don't want to impact my decal, but I just want to make sure that it's fully smooth. So my dip powder is hardened and you'll see here I'm just very lightly doing a buffing and you don't have to do this because it's just one thin layer of clear dip powder so chances are it's smooth and it doesn't need it so you could just go in and apply your final layer of activator to all your nails and then go in with your dip top coat. I removed any excess dust from my buffing so now I'm ready to get into my dip top coat. So I'm going to apply one final thin layer of activator to all my nails and then I'm going to wait a full two minutes for my activator to fully dry and then I will get into my dip top coat. Now that two minutes have passed for my first layer of dip top coat I'm applying it in two to three really quick swipes on each nail. In between each nail I'm making sure I'm wiping my brush on a lint free wipe just in case there's any excess activator. I don't want to harden my dip top coat brush or contaminate my bottle so I am doing this to all five nails making sure I'm wiping my brush in between each nails and then once I'm done with my fifth nail I'll be ready to go in with my second layer and I know it's ready because my top coat will start looking a little dull and a little wrinkly and so I will go in and for my second layer I'm going to make sure I've got everything covered. I'm going to make sure I'm capping my free edge. That's also going to help with any peeling and longevity of your mani.
As always, I'm going to finish off my mani by rehydrating my cuticles and I'm using my scales of mermaid cuticle oil in the scent Existential Crisis. And I know I always rave about scales of a mermaid, but that's because I absolutely love her products. I love how hydrating they are and they're not overly greasy. They absorb super quick. And here we are with the finished look. What do you think? I am so obsessed with Weird Friendship Anomaly and I know why it's sold out. I just love the colors of these flakies and the way they pop against either of the thermal colors. And I'm definitely glad I picked the decal that I did because I think it pairs really nicely with the dip powder color. If you hang tight as I wrap this up, I do have pictures inserted of the powder, how it looks cold, hot, transition as well as the glow because it glows so bright. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this and it also helps YouTube recommend me to others which helps grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.